Hello, everyone, and welcome to the November Joint Project Webinar hosted by the PNW District Board, Kiwanis Family Relations Committee. My name is Subhashri Venkata Subramanian, and I am the chair of the KFAM Committee, and also I serve as the Lieutenant Governor of Division 56. We are so thrilled to have you all here, and without further ado, let's begin the webinar. Okay, so first, Samuel Odi, the Lieutenant Governor of Division 58, will be presenting an introduction to joint projects and the benefits of holding joint projects. Thank you, Suba. Hello, everyone. And so first, let's talk about what a joint project is. Simply put, joint projects, also known as joint events, or when two or more clubs collaborate with each other to create a service project or other event for their clubs. Joint projects can involve another key club or another Kiwanis family club. Now let's move on to some reasons why you should hold joint projects. First and foremost, holding joint events with other branches of the Kiwanis family provides an excellent networking opportunity. Simply meeting new people can open doors and lead to experiences that otherwise would not exist. Also, joint projects can inspire not only you, but everyone else participating. One beautiful thing about the Kiwanis family is that it welcomes people of all ages and backgrounds. By working with such a diverse group, you gain valuable insight and can be inspired by all the great things that people have accomplished. Sometimes all it takes to become motivated is to hear the experiences of others. Joint projects can also help your club expand their service potential. By combining the forces of multiple branches of Kiwanis, the possibilities for reaching more people are expanded. For example, if you were planning to do a back to school backpack drive, your local Kiwanis club may be able to provide additional funding for the project, allowing it to make a greater impact on your community. Also, as we mentioned earlier, joint projects are a great way to achieve expanded community reach which in turn creates awareness and makes Kiwanis more of a household name. When the community is more aware of what Kiwanis is all about, they will be more willing to support future projects, thus helping Kiwanis impact more lives. And last but not least, joint projects are fun. Variety is the spice of life and switching things up makes for a fun time. One way to add variety to your club is to host a joint event. And if your joint event is something that members are really looking forward to, it can also be used to recruit prospective members. And with that, I will transition back over to Suba. Thank you, Sam. Now we will be presenting on how to contact the Kiwanis family from Lieutenant Governor of Division 32, Jenny Gu. Hello, everyone. First, let's talk about people you can contact from each branch of the Kiwanis family to coordinate joint events with. To initiate a joint project with a branch of the Kiwanis family, you first need to contact that specific branch in your area. For the Younger Builders Club and KKIDS members, it is best to contact their faculty advisor. Kiwanis Club connections can be typically made from might made by asking a faculty advisor, Kiwanis advisor, or lieutenant governor for your Kiwanis club contact information. To connect with a Circle K club, check with your lieutenant governor for their contact information. Now, here are some resources our committee has created to help you first and con find and contact these people. This is the PNW Key Club and Circle K Divisional Correspondence Graphic, which shows how Key Club divisions correspond with the Circle K divisions. Not all colleges have Circle K clubs, but you may refer to these graphics to see if there are any clubs within your division. You can find these resources at our website, tinyurl.com slash kfam resources, which is our resource folder and the and then going to the Circle K resources. This is also a graphic for inviting Kiwanians to key club events. Use this infographic to ask Kiwanians to attend your event. It includes the steps necessary for contacting Kiwanians and an email template. Once again, it can be found in our resource drive in the Kiwanis resources folder. 
These are two graphics for joining Kiwanis and Builders Club slash KKids events, which can help you become more involved in Kiwanis family events. Once again, they include the steps necessary and an email template and can be also found in the Kiwanis and Builders Club and KKids resource folder of our resource drive. Thank you, Jenny. And hi, everyone. My name is Steve Martinez. I serve as Lieutenant Governor for Division 50, and I'll be going over how to plan and coordinate a joint service project. So learning how to efficiently plan a joint service project, especially now, is extremely important. Using the golden circle format can help you stay organized and stay on task. This is a why, how, and what format. Number one, consider the why. Figure out what issue is prominent in your community and identify the root of that problem. Some questions to ask yourself is, one, what is an issue facing my community? Two, what is at the root of an issue? And three, how can that root be addressed? Also, for more information on finding a cause to tackle in your community, you can refer to the how to maximize the impact of your service resource available on the PNW Key Club issue page. Number two, how you will go about creating procedures for this project. First, you will have to choose which Kiwanis Family Branch Club you will be collaborating with. Then create an outline of steps to ultimately execute your goal. Invite some of your club members to planning sessions. Everyone is bound to have great ideas that can be implemented. Also, holding a planning meeting with officers from both clubs present is a great way to help involve both in the Kiwanis Family Club and your key club in the process. Create a doodle poll or other form of a poll to identify a project date that works for most people. Make sure to send out emails a month before the event. That way, everyone who is planning on attending can save some time in their schedules. Social media can be used to promote these events. I prefer using Instagram because you can always tell someone to follow and then have them turn on your post notifications and using Facebook Messenger, but you can always use whatever has proved to be successful for you. Also, a visual, visually appealing virtual flyer is an effective way to draw in more attendees. Like, have you seen our graphics? Thank you, Jess. But also include opportunities for members to interact with everyone else, which can help create bonds and make the event more exciting and rewarding. I will now pass it back to Suba. we've covered what joint projects are and how you can hold one, we will be presenting some joint project examples for each Kiwanis family branch, starting with Kiwanis. Hello everyone, my name is Heer Patel and I serve as the Lieutenant Governor of Division 38. Today I will be talking to you about joint service projects with Kiwanis. I will be giving past examples of partnerships between key clubs and Kiwanis clubs from various divisions. These are all examples that are submitted and are very recently published Joint Projects Guide on the PNW Issue page. So be sure to check it out after the webinar. This first example is a peanut butter drive that Bonnie Lake High School Key Club held with his Kiwanis Club. They partnered with the food bank and held the drive for two weeks. Around 2000 jars of peanut butter were collected by the end of the event. What a successful service project. Another joint project example is a road cleanup that Div Division AYS Anchorage Key Club, Kiwanis Club, and Key Clubs participate in to clean up roads around Anchorage. This is done through the Adopt a Road program administered by the Alaskans for Litter Prevention and Recycling. This is a great way to keep your community clean. This, both of these pictures feature Division 44. This first picture is from a dinner and silent auction fundraiser hosted by Cascade Park Kiwanis Club and their sponsoring key clubs volunteered at it. Silent auctions paired with dinner are always fun. The second picture is from, an, from the annual holiday bell ringing that Cascade Park Kiwanians and Division 44 key clubbers participate in for the Salvation Army. This is held at their local Fred Meyer. What a great way to get in the holiday spirit. This example also features another Division 44 joint project where key clubbers helped organize a holiday party for foster children in partnership with their Kiwanis Club. What a great example of helping your community. In addition to the great joint projects I just showcased, here are more joint project ideas that benefit your local community and key club preferred charities. You can make weighted stuffed animals for a local affiliate of the Children's Miracle Network, 
Similarly, you can make fleece blankets for a local homeless shelter. And lastly, you can make and donate dog toys for a local animal shelter. Now that I've talked through joint projects, I would like to talk about Kiwanis One Day. Kiwanis One Day is an annual service event by Kiwanis International that occurs on the fourth Saturday of October each year. All members of the Kiwanis family branches gather to serve and create change in their communities. Kiwanis One Day is a great opportunity for your key club to plan a joint event with a Kiwanis club. This year's Kiwanis One Day was held on October 24th. Even if you were not able to collaborate with Kiwanis during this year's Kiwanis One Day, you can start thinking about reaching out to your Kiwanis club to collaborate with them next year. And speaking of Kiwanis One Day, this event is a baby food drive. For Kiwanis One Day, Cascade Park Kiwanis Club hosted a baby food drive outside of a local Fred Meyer. Of course, key clubbers volunteered at the event, and by the end of the event, more than 564 pounds of baby food was collected. Collecting donations near your local grocery store is always an effective way of bringing in many donations. I'll be presenting this next section on examples of joint projects with Circle K. So to start off, here's an example of a joint DCM between Division 56 and WC Circle K. This was a joint blanket making event and was held last year. So working with K Circle K also opens up the doors to a lot of volunteering on a college campus. Some of these projects include concession sales, stadium cleaning, watching parking lots for a sporting event, campus cleanups, walkathons, and color runs. You can also ask a Circle K club if they are willing to send speakers to your club to present on topics such as college readiness or the application process, which we'll be going in more depth in in our panel section. And next we'll be talking about Builders Club and K Kids joint project examples with Division 82 Lieutenant Governor Caitlin Kim. Hello Pacific Northwest. Today I'll be discussing some joint project examples for Builders Club. So our first joint project is from Division 58 and it is pumpkin painting. Moses Lake High School's Key Club hosted a pumpkin painting event in partnership with the Kiwanis Club of Moses Lake, as well as inviting a Builders Club and two K-Kids clubs. The pumpkins painted were donated to local nursing homes to be used as decorations. Our second joint project example, Colors for Care, is from my home division 82. This fall, Ashland High School's Key Club partnered with Ashland Middle School's Builders Club to create care packages for the nursing home residents in the Rogue Valley. Builders Club members helped make handwritten letters, while Key Clubbers asked for company donations of products such as coloring books, coloring pencils, packaged snacks, and hand sanitizers over the period of a couple of months. Here are some other ideas if you would like to include Builders Club and K-Kids in joint projects. Many products can be recycled in exchange for a small payment. For example, you could collect aluminum cans and donate money collected to a cause such as a thirst project. This would be a great joint project because the more people involved, the larger the impact. It's also a great way to encourage students to be charitable while also bettering the environment. In addition, you can initiate a penny drive. Everyone has some spare change lying around, so why not put it to good use? Make it a competition between several different branches of Kiwanis and donate all money collected to charity. Now I will also be presenting about Action Club joint projects. Some joint project ideas with Action Club members include placing recycling canisters in businesses, planting trees, cleaning up parks and roads, visiting or adopting nursing homes, distributing anti-litter stickers, holding an aluminum can drive, raising funds for state special Olympics, purchasing material for the local library, making and selling Christmas ornaments, landscaping community grounds, and making and selling Easter baskets. Here are some examples of Action Club service projects which can have easily be translated into joint events. Here we have an Action Club car wash, an Action Club and Kiwanis auction, and an Action Club park cleanup. Thank you, Caitlin. So due to the current COVID-19 restrictions, your club will most likely be partaking in virtual events. So I'll be presenting some information on planning and holding virtual joint projects. The first step to planning a virtual joint project is to establish stable communication between your club and the Kiwanis family the, and the other branch of the Kiwanis family club. 
This will most likely take place through Zoom calls or emails, so it's important to be organized and efficient when planning virtual meetings or sending out information. Always start by sending out an email to, to schedule a Zoom call. Remember when emailing, always aim to be as clear and concise as possible and follow the nine to nine rule. That is send it between 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. Aiming for one call and email a week is a good way to make sure that you are communicating effectively with the other club. The next step of a virtual joint project is the event and meeting setup. 15 minutes prior to the event, make sure to log into your meeting, test your audio settings as well as those of the other speakers and have music playing in the background so it's not awkward for participants when they enter. Five minutes prior to the event, you can start admitting meeting attendees and in, in the waiting room. And if you're playing music, feel free to spotlight members. Next, during the meeting, make sure to utilize tips and tricks like icebreakers, breakout rooms, and polls to make the meeting more collaborative and impactful. It is important to engage members during the event and give them the opportunity to meet new people from other branches of the Kiwanis family instead of subjecting members to a one-sided lecture setting. And lastly, after the meeting ends, make sure to encourage your attendees to give you feedback to see what worked well and what can be improved upon in future events. Some ways you can do this is by sending out a Google form survey, an email asking for a quick response, or even a text. And now here are some joint project, virtual joint project examples. Some Kiwanis examples are a love letter for literacy packets or making materials to encourage people to vote, such as flyers or emails. You can also write cards to seniors, medical workers, firefighters, etc. Some Circle K examples are hosting a college application workshop, online tutoring with college students, or having a Key Club versus Circle K trivia night. And with the Builders Club or K Kids Club, some virtual events you can hold are virtual storybook reading or writing cards for teachers and school staff. And here are some virtual resources that you can utilize when planning these events. Developed by our MGRC committee, the Virtual Engagement Toolkit is a great resource to help you make your virtual joint projects more interesting and engaging. It contains many helpful tips and tricks for conducting virtual meetings, as well as some virtual project ideas, which you may be able to translate into joint projects. You can find the toolkit at the following link. So the PNW Heat Club issue page, and then in documents, it's the Virtual Engagement Toolkit. And now we will be having a panel Q&A section with three panelists from our district. Our panelists include Katie Wynn, the Lieutenant Governor of Division 44, Jerlyn Vega, the Lieutenant Governor of Division 2224, and Bella Frizzle, the 2019 to 2020 Moses Lake Key Club Treasurer. First, we have Hira Patel interviewing Katie Wynn. Hello again. Kitty will be talking to us today about the Kiwanis One Day Love Letters for Literacy event that she coordinated as Lieutenant Governor. For some information about the event, all four key clubs that are sponsored by our Kiwanis Club recently participated in this year's Kiwanis One Day virtually. They made literacy packets for Love Letters for Literacy. These packets are letters from A to Z that pre-readers can use to learn the alphabet. The packets go to children in orphanages and low-income neighborhoods. They had representatives from Kiwanis, Circle K, Key Club, and Builders Club present. The cards that were made at her event will be going to children in Philadelphia. So Katie, my first question is, how did you go about reaching out to Kiwanis when planning your joint service project during Kiwanis One Day 2020? Any tips? Um, so first, I started by reaching out to my area administrator um, near the event date. And then we started deciding what event we kind of wanted to host because normally we do our baby food drive, which would be in person. But this year, due to COVID-19, we were unable to do that. And so we had to like adjust everything. Um, as for tips, I think first is to develop that mutual connection that you are interested in what Kiwanis is all about and their service projects and meetings. And so being really involved in what the projects that your Kiwanis club has been doing is something super important. Thank you for the tips. So my second question for you is, how did you choose love letters for literacy? Did you work with them before? And how did you find out about them? Um, I found out about love letters from literacy after attending a Kiwanis meeting from one of the clubs in my division. Um, and then after that meeting, I decided to host a DCM to make packets for love letters for literacy. 
Um, and then after realizing that we couldn't hold their in-person event, as I mentioned before, we chose Love Letters for Literacy because it's a relatively easy thing for both people who are younger and Kiwanians to do. Thank you, Katie. I love how you adapted to our virtual situation. And my next question is, why should key clubbers hold joint service projects with Kiwanis? Um, as Sam has mentioned before, if you hold a joint project with another Kiwanis family branch, it really maximizes your impact because more people are involved in the service project and thus more things like these literacy packets can be created. That is very true. What has been the most impactful part about collaborating with Kiwanis? I think the most impactful part about collaborating with Kiwanis is really learning how they run things and how they're so adaptable to change, especially when we were unable to host our in-person event. It was my area administrator that really kind of spearheaded everything to decide like we're still gonna celebrate Kiwanis one day in a really special way. And lastly, and similarly, what have you learned from collaborating with Kiwanis? Um, I have really learned the importance of communication. Um, if you're really transparent about what vision you have for the project, then it's super easy to start planning. And when everybody's in the loop, it really helps to have everybody like on the same page and understand what's going on. Thank you so much for your insight, Hitty. Congratulations on your successful virtual Kiwanis One Day 2020. Thank you. So next is our panelist on working with Circle K, Dylan Vega, <laughs> Lieutenant Governor of Division 2224, who will be answering some questions about her division's college application workshop, workshop with UW Circle K. So for more information about the event, UW Circle K held the UW College Application Workshop to help students applying for college. It included a frequently asked questions section, a Q&A session, and an essay revision like breakout room session. There were around 35 attendees, and the event's purpose was to provide surrounding key clubbers some advice, as well as tips and tricks on the college application process. So now on to our questions. Jerlyn, how did your experience working with Circle K compare to working with other branches of the Kiwanis family? Okay, well, first, I'd like to say that there was definitely a difference between working with different Kiwanis family branches and um, Every branch, obviously, as a result of differing age ranges, have different norms. Um, and obviously, you have to filter some content when working with builders clubs versus if you were working with a Circle K. Um, one of the bigger differences, I think, working with a Circle K versus, let's say, a sponsoring Kiwanis club is that they're just more in tune with what key clubbers at the high school level would need or enjoy in terms of service. I compare it to like how an older sibling does all these cool things and then they give you advice and all these things are really valuable because they relate to you just a little bit more. Um, and the age proximity and the fact that a lot of them were just recently high schoolers makes their service ideas hit just a little bit differently. Thank you. So regarding promotion, how did you promote the workshop? Do you have any tips for promoting through different mediums? Um, I think difficulty in promoting comes from how much it depends on your own members. Um, no matter what medium you use, though, just make sure to be consistent and clear with your posts. My main medium is Instagram, just because that's where um, a lot of my members are more active. So I'll just give some tips on that. Um, Basically for Instagram, you just gotta make graphics that catch people's attention and then share it everywhere. So if you posted a picture, repost that picture on your story a couple times as the event nears, um, utilize Instagram widgets like story polls, questions, or like the cute little stickers. Um, and also make sure that you send that post or story to all of your group chats. Just because you posted the photo does not mean you have finished with your promotion. Um, and I always plug this website, but I'm sure a lot of you already know about it. Um, I make a lot of my graphics in Canva and you could always use Photoshop, but if you're not a Photoshop god like Suba or our district editor, Jess, then I would really recommend Canva because it's free. It's um, easy to use and many designs are already pre-made just in case you were in a hurry. Well, thank you, Drulin. And also, I really want to point out one of the cool things that Drulin does with her divisional social media is she utilizes the animations feature on Canva. And I think that really helps make the graphics even more eye catching. So another tip there, you can always animate your graphics to make them kind of pop a bit more. So question number 
We on three? Oh, question number three. Do you have any suggestions for planning and coordinating a virtual event or any virtual tips and tricks that you utilize in this event, such as breakout rooms, polls, icebreakers, et cetera? Yeah, I'm always a big proponent of breakout rooms and icebreakers. Um, I know a lot of people hate icebreakers because sometimes they have the opposite of their intended purpose um, and isolate people instead of helping the people in your division or club get to know each other more. Um, so it's really important to, again, read the vibe of your members when picking out an icebreaker. Um, I personally enjoy icebreakers that make me get up and out of this like breakout room space. Um, so like making people physically get up and find an item in their room or um, find a, an item in the room that brings some specific memory or making people find an item that they all have in common. Unique icebreakers like this can really make your event memorable and actually get members to interact with each other in ways that are more meaningful to them. Okay, question number four. What was the feedback that you received from the workshop? A lot of the members that I spoke to about the workshop felt like the advice from college students really helped them out. Um, again, working with a Kiwanis family branch that's so close in age and mindset probably really helped that. I think what also helped was the fact that it was timed um, when a lot of seniors were worried about their UW college application. Um, so it was again, very relevant and applicable to the members in my division. That's true. And lastly, do you have any plans to work with UW Circle K in the future? Yeah, actually, the workshop went so well the first time that a lot of the members requested another one. So UW Circle K held another workshop with basically the same premise, a little bit closer to the UW um, application date and added a group game time that tried to relieve stress. And as someone who was really stressed about college applications and th that college deadline, that game time surprisingly really helped my stress, um, even though it wasn't considered a typical service aspect. Um, and I think that's just one example of how working with um, the UW Circle K really broadened my view of how successful service projects could be run. And so, yeah, I really, I really do hope to work with them in the future. Well, that's really great. And I'm also so happy to hear that you even went on and had another event following the first one because of how successful it was. So thank you so much for your time and insight, Jerlyn. Our final panelist, Bella Frizzell, the immediate past treasurer of Moses Lake Key Club, is here to talk with us about working with Builders Club through their pumpkin painting joint event. So this was a holiday themed pumpkin painting event to decorate nursing homes. Moses Lake Key Club worked with a local Kiwanis Club, Builders Club, and 2K Kids organizations for this event. This joint project is a great example of how joint projects can serve as a bridge between different clubs, since Moses Lake was able to collaborate with four branches of the Kiwanis family. So my first question for Bella is, can you walk us through the process of how to establish communication with another branch when proposing a joint project? So before we got in contact with any of the other advisors from different branches, we made sure we had like a clear plan on what we wanted to do and like what supplies we needed for our event and like what time. And then our advisor was able to provide us with the emails of the other branches advisors. And then we just shot them an email saying what we wanted to do um, what time, where it was, and if they wanted to be a part of it. That's amazing. Um, so next, how specifically did you engage younger members in the pumpkin painting event? Uh, to engage younger members, we had food, which uh, food and drink, which is usually a good way to unify people and get them to like interact with each other. And then we also had pumpkin painting, which is good for all ages. It keep all the young ones like entertained, and it's a good way to like socialize. So question number three, do you have any words of advice or caution that we should keep in mind when planning a joint project with Builders Club or K-Kids? Um, be sure to communicate um, with the different uh, branches quite early um, as soon as you got like a rough plan of what you want to do just so they have time to tell their tell their group, tell their members and get the word out. And then also to get like a pretty accurate head count so that you are able to get the right amounts of supplies. Thank you for that advice. 
Uh, for question four, how did you prep and fundraise for the project and get the supplies? Our club was very fortunate. We had a good amount of money saved up for this event, but there's always fundraisers like um, Circle K or Miracle Minute or uh, the Highway Cleanup is two of the ones we used. Lastly, what mediums did you use to promote the joint project? So for promoting our project, obviously we talked about it in our club meetings and we had our other branches talk about it in their meetings, but you can always do flyers, posters. If you have an active Instagram, you can always post on there. Um, or you can always use like, we use the Remind app to like let everyone know when the date was and then remind them that the event was coming up. Okay, so what I took from that is get it out as soon as possible and as often as possible. So thank you for your insight, Bella. Thank you. And now that we've heard from all of our panelists, we will be having an open floor Q&A section. So feel free to unmute your microphone and ask questions or send them in the chat. You can ask about joint projects with a specific branch of the Kiwanis family or about any general um, or any general questions on Kiwanis family relations as well. Okay, while people are hopefully typing some questions out, um, I'm just gonna put in a quick plug here. Our Kiwanis Family Relations Committee just released our joint project guide resource on the PNW Key Club issue page. So you can find that by going to our PNW Key Club issue page, or you can also go there from the link in the PNW Key Club bio on Instagram. So I really advise that you guys all go check that out. I'll just put the link in the chat. Um, it contains a lot of the information that we presented today, but in the form of a booklet, and um, it's designed by our district editor, Jess, who did an incredible job as usual. So. Okay, so we have we have a question here from Thomas. Um, oh, okay, I think this is a question about Bella's service project. So were all the supplies provided for the event or did people have to bring anything? Our club was able to provide all of the supplies and so nobody had to bring anything. Okay, and then Melanie also has a question for Bella. So did you do any follow-up PR after the event um, to like let your community know about it? Um, no, we didn't like do any of that, but we did like uh, bring all of the pumpkins to the nursing homes and the nursing homes took pictures. But other than that, we didn't really do much PR after that. Okay, cool. So yeah, I think, um, Melanie makes a really good point here when whenever you hold like a really big joint project, a great thing to do is advertise to your community the effects of it or especially if you're doing something with fundraising, or if you're um, uh, sending resources or something like that you can always advertise to your club and show them the effects of what they did participate in. Uh, so we have a question, how did the cards get collected for love letters for literacy, Katie. So our Kiwanis advisors waited at a middle school for like a certain time frame and then key clovers just came and dropped them off. Okay, cool. Oh, and Patty makes a really good point with having the local newsletter publish pictures that they send in for events. So that's another thing that if you ask your Kiwanis club, um, if you're working with Kiwanis on the joint project, uh, they might already have connect connections with the local newsletter and help you with advertising in that way. Oh, okay, this is a question um, that I would like to ask Katie. So what was your success rate or percentage when pitching um, your proposals for joint events to your Kiwanis club to collaborate with? Um, so usually the Kiwanians is super adaptive to the ideas that key clubbers present. And a lot of these ideas are like very traditional and we uh, do them like multiple years. And so I think it's pretty successful. Mm -hmm. That's great to hear. So um, Kiwanians are always very open and adaptable to work with for events. So really, I just want to really stress here that like don't feel intimidated or anything like that to reach out to your Kiwanis club because they are there to support your key club. And um, 
all the Kwanyas that I've spoken with have always been very energetic about working with key clubs. So. And that applies to all the branches of the Kiwanis family as well. Okay, are there any other questions? Oh, whoa, that's really cool. So Lonnie says that um, their home club actually has a reporter um, as an honorary member and they're willing to publish articles and pictures. So that kind of shows how like Kiwanis clubs do have a lot of connections within the community. And um, it's something that you can really utilize if you're planning any joint projects with them. Okay, so um, I have a question here. So writing cards are easy. Okay, so what about some other virtual joint project ideas that are non-close contact? Uh, so you guys can also just put these in the chat if your clubs have done any, but some of the joint project, the virtual joint project ideas that we presented were like working with um, Circle K and having tutoring. You can provide tutoring by working with a college. You can provide tutoring just as a key club to maybe middle schoolers in Builders Club or um, to elementary schoolers and K kids. Uh, some other things that you can do is along with card making, there's a lot of other crafts that you can kind of do virtually. I know that making like masks was pretty big at like the beginning of the pandemic. And then some other projects are making some weighted stuffed toys. But um, our home key club, my, my home key club, Pullman Key Club is doing is we're having a rice bag fundraiser where you, um, you take socks and then you fill it with rice and it's for uh, baby kittens in our local animal shelter. So that's another thing that you can do. And I see a lot of people are putting some ideas in the chat, so that's great. Okay, um, are there any other questions? Oh, Morgan, go ahead. Sorry, I'm typing this out, but it's taking me a really long time to explain. <laughs> I just thought I'd point out with tutoring, you should be really careful about like the school you're gonna be tutoring with. Um, if it's a middle school or even with other high schoolers, I heard from one of my clubs in my division that they wanted to do tutoring with the other high schoolers and, and middle schoolers for a project, but their school leadership, um, they, they had talked to them and they were like, this can actually cause a little bit of a problem if something is said that offends someone or if um, anything happens, there can be problems. So I would, I would, it's still a good option, but I would recommend being careful and definitely talking to your school first because they might have some reservations or rules about it that you don't know. Yeah, I think that's definitely a great point that Morgan brought up. Um, always making sure that you're operating within the guidelines of your school and making sure that your school is aware of all the activities that you're doing. Even if you're working with Kiwanis, you still want your school to really be up to date with everything so that, um, <laughs> I think Katie's trying to start some beef in the comments, um, but so that everyone um, is on the same page and we're all communicating effectively. Yeah, and as Patty points out, your faculty advisor is a great point of contact whenever you want to know about the school policy and making sure you're not accidentally violating any school policy. Oh, Morgan, you still have your hand raised. Would you like to? Yes, and as Kathleen points out, um, contacting our district administrator, Brian Egger, is always a good, good thing to do if you're ever unsure about um, operating within certain restrictions or anything like that, so. Okay, so with that, I think we will wrap up our questioning. If you have any more questions, oh, um, Yes, uh, this, this slideshow will be available. It'll be in our um, resource drive. So if you go to tinyurl.com slash 
KFAM resources, then you can find it there. And then the recording will also be posted on the PNW Key Club YouTube channel. Then if for any reason you can't access those resources, I'll just put the link for um, the resource drive in the chat. But if you can't access those resources, you can always email our committee, kfam at pnwkeyclub.org, and we can always get that to you. Um, so with that, we will continue our, we will conclude our fall 2020 joint project webinar. Thank you all so much for coming. And if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to any of our committee members or email me at kfam at pnwkeyclub.org. Also, thank you to our wonderful panelists for sharing their insight and time with all of us today. So once again, thank you all and have a great day. Bye everyone. Bye everyone, thank you, impressive. Thank you. What the heck does cotton picking smart mean? What? You guys were awesome sauce. What the heck does cotton picking You guys all make me so proud, you don't even know. I just can't keep bragging about you guys. And oh. under the COVID restrictions, everything you do just makes me so proud. Great job. Just great job. Kathleen, you're so thank you. Kathleen. Have a safe and to you all if I don't see you before then. We love you. I love, love all of you so Me and Jerlyn think Oh my gosh. How did I do that at the exact same time? What? <laughs> Jerlyn? Me and Suva both went like this at the exact same time. Well, great. You just phenomenal job, kids. Well, every single one of you, every one of these webinars is so inspiring. And I mean, I feel like a proud mom for all, to all of you. I just, except I'm old, but <laughs> you got Jeannie's over there laughing at me. It just make me so proud. So before I just start weeping, great job. Thank you, Kathleen. Everyone enjoy your weekends. Bye. Yes. Bye. Woo! Bye. Bye.